Hi friends, welcome to Stamping with Wow. It's Jennifer Sasaki, your favorite Stamping Up demonstrator. And today we are going to be making, not this box that I'm showing you, cause this is a Mother's Day box, but today we're gonna be making this same box, but we're gonna make it for Father's Day. So this is Mother's Day weekend, so happy Mother's Day to all you mothers. And I just wanted to show you one box two different ways. So we're gonna have a mother versus father kind of competition. So I made the Mother's Day box using the Hydrangea Hill Suite in our spring catalog. The paper is really pretty um, and I used gorgeous grape with it, um, but you could use Highland Heather. These are the color recommendations using the designer series paper. So it's Rococo Rose, Highland Heather, Seaside Spray, Misty Moonlight, and Old Olive. And aren't they beautiful? I mean, and then I also use some of this mercury glass too. And I use the dyes. Did I use the dyes? I can't remember. I did die cut out the mercury glass flowers. And then I use this sheer, gorgeous grape sheer ribbon and the stamp set. I just thought this was a nice sentiment. The world is better because of you. That could be on here all the time. Just something, you know, that you know, just makes you think something positive when you open the box. And this box could, could easily be a gift box or it could be used for a keepsake. It has a magnetic closure so it'll stay closed. Today, we are going to make this bad boy in da, 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 Father's Day gift. Actually, the um, Dragonfly bundle is in here that we're gonna be using. I was looking through my stuff trying to find what do I have that would be good masculine kind of cards. These were the two pieces I'm going to use for inspiration. So I do like, I think this does get away with being a little masculine. I would love that, but I don't have that leaf stamp. But I think that would have been really pretty too. So those are my inspirations. This is the Dragonfly Garden Bundle. Now through the end of, or early June, you can still order this bundle for $36.75. You get this stamp set and this punch. And what I like about this is you get a little and a big and the stamp set does all the veining of the wings so you can have a, a lot of fun. And then this will color your wings. The designer series paper I chose to use, um, I was gonna use Simply Elegant, but I'm using In Good Taste because uh, you're gonna need two 12 by 12 sheets to start. Um, and uh, we don't carry black 12 by 12, so the next best thing would be a dark gray, the probably called basic gray. And I don't, didn't have any basic gray on me at the time. I do have some, this is the paper I'm gonna use. I have two pieces of early espresso, so that's kind of the default that we came up with. But the Simply Elegant would have been really pretty on here if you had some black, or if you wanted to make a smaller box, then you could definitely use, because this paper is just beautiful. I just, if I would have had the dark gray, I didn't want to not be able to do it right. So. We're gonna pass on that, but that paper would have been very nice, masculine paper. But I do like the textures in this In Good Taste bundle. Okay, this is a big project. So what you're gonna need, two sheets of designer series paper. I think you'll use about six inches, but you want two that coordinate. We're gonna trim that up in a minute. You wanna cut your 12 by 12 paper down to it's 10 and a half by 12, and then we're gonna score it. So you want two sheets that are 10 and a half by 12, and we are going to do the exact same scoring for both sheets. And then you're gonna need a piece of chipboard. Now your chipboard, either you have chipboard that you purchased or you have the chipboard that's coming behind um, a paper pad, or it could be the chipboard that comes behind even the stamping up paper packs. When you get them, there's a piece of chipboard that keeps it from bending. This is my store website, and here's my host code through May 15th of 2021, if you'd like to place an order with me. You want two pieces of 12 by 12 paper, and you're gonna cut one side down to 10 and a half. So I have two pieces that are 10 and a half by 12. So you need two sheets of that. 
And then I've already pre-scored this one, so I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna walk you through the scoring. The scoring is exactly identical with both sheets. And we are going to score three inches on all four sides and one and a half inches on all four sides. So here I'm at my three inches. And what, since I'm only scoring right now, I like to take my um, trimmer blade out so I don't accidentally grab it while I'm scoring. So I'm lining up to the three inches and I'm gonna score and then I'm gonna move lights in the way down to the one and a half inches and I'm going to score it again so, and then I'm going to turn it so there's two score lines on each side we're going to go to the three inches again and I'm going to go back to the one and a half again and then I'm going to turn it one more time not one more time to another side three inches back to the one and a half inches and the last side so all four sides are going to get this same score three inches and the one and a half inches okay all right and then I'm trying to think, I think we're done temporarily with the trimmer. And you want both sheets like this, so. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna remove the three corner squares on all four sides, okay? So the way I'm gonna do this, let me let you come down, if that's helpful. Um, before you fold any of this paper, you have these little valleys and to me, it's easier to cut in the valley. So I'm going to cut on my score line. So here's my first score line. That was the one and a half inch. This is the three inch. I'm stopping the cut at the three inch. And then I'm going to do the same over here. So this was my one and a half inch line, and this is my three inch line, that's my three inch line, and that's my one and a half. So now I have two little tags right here. So I'm gonna cut this guy off right here at my score line. So I'm removing those two boxes, and this is the third box I'm gonna remove. And then I have that. And I'm gonna repeat that on all four sides, but first I'm going to notch out the little V or half a V on both sides, all right? Now what I like to do is I like to stay on the same side as this and come over here and I'm gonna just repeat this whole process. I'm gonna come down my valley of my one and a half inch score line and my valley of the three inch score line. And I'm stopping at that three inch score line of the other side. Now you can turn it if it's easier and we can just cut these two guys off and then cut this guy off. And then you have this guy still. Then we're gonna do those little notches. That just helps the tag the flaps fit better when we go to adhere them. Okay, and now, so now one half of our paper looks like this. I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna repeat. So I'm cutting down my three inch valley and I'm stopping at my three inch score mark and I'm repeating that. Stopping at my three inch score mark. Then it's easier if you turn it. I'm gonna cut this guy off at the three inch to the one and a half. And this guy off right there. So again, I have one flap and I'm just gonna notch that out. Just like so. Okay, last corner. Just repeating what we did. We're on the three inch score line. We are cutting to the other three inch score line. Then we're at the one and a half inch score line and we're cutting to the three inch score line again. 
it's easier to turn your paper to cut out these squares. And then we're just adding the notch. Now, don't worry, we're going to do this one more time on our other sheet of paper. So this is what you should look like. All right, let me just come up a little bit so you can see. So this is what your, your sheet of paper, so both sheets of paper are going to look like this when we're done. Next, we are going to... Go ahead and get out your bone folder because you really want good creases, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and crease all of the folds. So make a fold and crease it. And then this one, you want all of that over. Now we're gonna go ahead and turn these into two boxes. So I'm gonna be using uh, the tearing tape. If you wanna use stamping seal, oh, we could use, let's use stamping seal. There's no reason we can't. So we're gonna start with the little flaps and I'm using a stamping seal plus. The regular stamping seal, um, is too light of an adhesive for a structure like this. When you want something to be able to be weight bearing and to last, you want to use in the foundation. So what you wanna do is this flap with adhesive, you're gonna bring it right into this flap and this fold is gonna match up with that edge. So we're just gonna turn it and get that fold lined up. And then just give it a nice little press. Now, if you use wet adhesive, you have to wait for drying time, okay? So that's the only disadvantage to wet adhesive. And we're just repeating that. All four tabs, we're taking that folded corner and lining it up with that raw edge. So here we have, this is the edge, this is the folded corner, and we're lining them up and pressing them in. All right, and then it might be easier if these flaps are folded out for now, but that's all we're doing for right now. So that's one piece of our box. So now what we're gonna do is, and we, I can just do tear and tape real quick to show you just how simple. Tear and tape obviously in this sample probably is a little bit easier than the stamp and seal. Now on this one, I'm gonna do all four edges. So we're going to put all four edges down, just like so, make sure they're sticking. And then we're going to take our bone folder into the corners to make sure our corners are nice and smooth, because if they're not smooth, they'll cause other things not to fit in here. So I'm just going to take that point and jab it in there and make sure my corners are flat like the paper didn't buckle up. And if it did, it's just gonna get flattened out. All right. And just give all your adhesive a good press together. So now you have two, they almost look like trays. You have two things. Next, what we're gonna need is you can use designer series paper, or you can use a coordinating piece of cardstock. So based on the designer series paper you've picked out, I think I like this Sahara sand a little bit better than the crown. All right. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna get 
So on my Mother's Day box, what I did is um, the outside of the box, the 12 by 12 pieces of paper I used are gorgeous, great. But the inside of the box, the uh, cardstock I used was Highland Heather. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing on this box. So the pieces that we need, we need a three inch by six inch piece. So on that eight, on the um, 11 inch side of my paper, I'm gonna cut three inches and I need my blade back in here. Okay, so I'm cutting three inches and then I'm gonna twirl that down to six inches and I'm gonna score this at one and a half inches. All right. All right, so this piece is three inches by six inches, scored at one and a half, and that's gonna put the two box pieces together. We're gonna need a two by six. So let me cut the two by six. And we're gonna score this at a quarter inch. We're gonna use this to wrap over on our chipboard. And we're gonna trim that down to a six. Okay, so let me cut out my four and a half by six. Right now we have these three pieces and we need two more. So we want two pieces that, so we're going to do, let's see, four in it, so nine, so let's just take it this way. We're going to do two inches, and we want this at four and a half. So next piece we're gonna do, so right now, oh, these two pieces need to have a quarter inch score on them as well. So these are the two pieces that are two inches by four and a half. So let's go ahead and get a quarter inch score mark on those. All right, so these pieces that we scored, these three pieces we scored, those are gonna be for wrapping chipboard. So we're gonna put those aside for now. Actually, we're going to put all this aside for now. We're going to cut our chipboard. All right, so we talked about chipboard, and what we want is a piece that is four and a half by six and a half. So, you don't want to cut your chipboard with a good blade because it will um, dull it. Now I'm definitely cutting this shorter than four and a half inches. So this is gonna be six and a half by four and a half, but I'm gonna cut off a little bit more. So I'm actually lining it up to like what would be the, I think it's 15 sixteenths. So I cut it once, but I'm just gonna cut it on that fold real quick. You could also use an X-Acto knife, anything that gets the job done. And then we want this at six, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm at five and, what's that, 15 sixteenths? Okay, so the next piece you're gonna need is um, one and five eighths by six. So we're gonna do um, one and five eighths. And again, I'm just gonna, so what you want, this is gonna be a lip inside our box. And all we wanna do, just take my exacto knife, might be faster than my scissors. So this is just gonna create a lip in our box. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the full six inches. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to trim that down or not. Okay, and then we're gonna need two pieces that are four and a half by one and five eighths. There we go. 
You can go over this a few times as long as it's not, once it stops making the cutting sound, it's not going any deeper. So then we're gonna trim this down to four and a half. And I'm gonna come in a hair shorter because I know it has to um, fit alongside the other one. One and five eighths again, and we're gonna trim this down to the four. So we're just half. gonna I'll just use the exacto knife. Okay, and we're gonna trim that down to four and a half. And I'm gonna do a hair less because I'm pretty sure four and a half is gonna be just a little too wide once we add this. All right, so what you should have are these three pieces. Actually, so on your chipboard, you should have these four pieces. This was four by six and a half, a hair short on both ends. And these, these are the pieces we're gonna use for the inside of our box. So those are the pieces we're gonna use next. And for our trimmer for now we will be coming back and we're going to need these three pieces that we put a quarter inch score mark on and we're just gonna go ahead and fold the score mark and burnish burnish or crease so there we go we're gonna do this and one more I'm gonna use um, tear and tape for this because it's a quarter inch, so it'll fit in this fold. Um, the Stampin' Seal Plus is wider than a quarter inch, so it's not gonna, It's you're gonna have a lot more you'll have to fold over onto itself if you use that one, but either will work. Um, and then we're going to put another piece at the bottom and you can have a little lip there because you're probably trimming off some of that lip. All right. So I just have a little space at the bottom. So I'm just putting in the tear and tape up on the side that's above the score. And then I'm putting some a little bit away from the bottom edge because I'm probably trimming all of these pieces. And if you don't, it's going to be fine. It's not really going to lift right there. So it's not enough room for it to lift really. Because then we're going to put um, chipboard inside our box and these edges are going to rest up against the the bottom of our box. All right, so we're gonna take this first. This is the six inch piece, and this is our six inch piece. So let's remove that top piece of tear and tape. And we're gonna bring up that fold. You're gonna bring in that chipboard, and you're gonna fold it over. And we're gonna burnish this so that chipboard sticks to it. All right, and then you might want to get that top edge too. All right, just like so. Just want a nice fold in that paper. And then if any of the cardstocks folded over on this edge, we're just going to trim that. You can use your scissors, an X-Acto knife. Um, if you want to use your trimmer just gonna be like that so I just didn't feel like there was any way I could get a real measurement because it depends on how one it depends on how thick your chipboard is and how well the cardstock wants to fold over it okay so what we're gonna do with this let's go ahead and put this piece off and let that adhere to our chipboard 
that's one piece and we're going to do that exact same process with these two other pieces okay so on the folded piece i like to take this one off first and get it around my chipboard and then worry about this piece adhering to the chipboard because the paper is going to move on you so what you think might work might not and you want to burnish this really down onto that chipboard otherwise you might get lifting later after you've constructed the box see like i just see how tiny that overhang is so i just couldn't give you a real measurement to avoid that it's just easier to trim your paper all right so we're going to take off this adhesive see how i fight with that that's when your take your pick tool comes in handy so that's the other piece of my chipboard ready to go and my last one i'm just going to clean up these edges that look a little rough there we go okay so i'm going to work with that part the area that was scored and no one's gonna see this chipboard so it doesn't matter what your chipboard looks like the chipboard's getting hidden in the box so we're gonna make sure we're lined up and fold that over and then we're gonna burnish it so it sticks real good and i'm burnishing the ooh, oh shoot that's not what i wanted get it right on top of that stamping up I'm burnishing the um, top because I want, um, hopefully, oh good, it's like hopefully this will take it off, not all the way, but darn, anyways, there we go, oh, I got marking too, all right, so it's important to burnish that top edge so it helps the paper want to be in this shape and then i have more overhang so i'm just going to trim that off as long as you cut everything accurately with your trimmer this this is fine if the amount of overhang is different for each piece just depends on how the fibers of the cardstock folded over all right so now you have these three pieces and we're going to use some more okay so i um didn't realize i wasn't filming i was working and realized oh the camera isn't going at least i didn't get very far so all i've done is on these pieces that we've wrapped you saw me um folding over the paper and burnishing it down so it sticks real good. So I did that to all three pieces. And now these two pieces, I've added a strip of tear and tape. You could use the Stamping Seal Plus. I've added two strips and they're right below where that cardstock I wrapped over. So you don't want any adhesive on that cardstock that you wrapped over on the chipboard. And we just have this last piece to do. So I apologize for missing out on that filming, but I still have one piece that you can see. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just using that edge of the um, cardstock to line up my edge of this tear and tape. And I'm just repeating that at the bottom as well. So um, these are gonna get adhered to our box. So here's our box and we're gonna we can work with it before it's adhered together so you just pick one or the other that you want for your um that you want for your bottom because right now you're picking your bottom so i'm going to start with this six inch piece i'm going to remove the tear and tape paper backing on both strips and you're picking the front of your box. So look at your box overall and wherever you like the front. And then this is the sticky raw edge side. 
that's going to go into your box and up against that front panel. And then all you see is the lip of the cardstock. And you can take, and inside is the cardstock. So what got adhered to this edge right here was the raw edge, okay? So the piece we wrapped is, all you can see is the cardstock you wrapped over it. So I'm just gonna take my bone folder in there and make sure I press it down really good. All right. And we're gonna do the same thing with these other two pieces on these sides, all right? So we're gonna take this piece off and we'll get this piece off and then we're just gonna lay it. All right, so now what, what's happening is, remember I said we might have to remove a hair because it, it's dependent on this depth of this chipboard. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim off, not even the width of my scissors, all right? So I trimmed off like that much. Maybe it's an eighth of an inch. It's just hard to say how much you would need to trim because everyone's chipboard's gonna have a different width. But you don't want it to be too tight so it won't fit in your box. So now what you have is a nice lip. We'll come in and we'll take some a marker and color in that little raw edge right there. But that's how we're creating a nice lip for the top of our box to close on. So again, I'm just removing the two pieces of tear and tape. There we go. And I'm gonna put it in this other side. And let's see, yep, we're gonna need to trim this just a wee bit. I'm using like the width of my scissor blade to help me come up with a little smidgen. So you wanna cut less is more, and then if you have to do it again, just keep with that less is more so that you don't overcut, because once you overcut, you gotta start over on that particular piece. So now what you have are all the raw chipboard edge was covered by the outside of the box, and all you have is that nice, cardstock that you put in here, right? So then what we can do is we have, oh, I guess we need to put this guy in. So this is that three inch piece that's three inches by six inches scored at the one half. So we've put a fold in it. So let's take, um, yeah, this is right. So on the side that has the fold, we're going to put, um, you can use stamping seal. I'm going to use tear and tape. So you want a little bit away from that fold in the center like this on both sides of that score line. And you don't want to butt it up right up to that score line because when we do this, um, there's going to be a little gap when we bring these two pieces together. Okay. So, and then you're gonna want a piece on the top and bottom edge. All right, one more. Oops. There we go. All right. And then just press those down real good because you're not going to have a lot of easy reach when you put these two boxes together. So I'm going to remove just two of the strips on the same side. And we'll go ahead and, oh, I'm going to need to trim it out. So we could have put it in beginning. Now let's go ahead and put it in on this side first then. So go ahead and you want it to go all the way up to your top and lay it down. All right, and then do your corners real good because again, you want it to be tight in those corners. All right, and then we're gonna trim down I need to trim down mine. I don't know if you'll need to trim down yours. I'm gonna just trim down this other piece. 
so it fits in my parameters. So I'm going to take just a wee bit off. I just took off a hair and I might have to take off more but I'm just gonna see and you want it on both sides but don't cut your box and then just dry fit it before you don't take off your adhesive yet and that's gonna fit pretty good I'm happy with that okay so I'm gonna take off this adhesive this is gonna be a tight fit so Bear with me, you're gonna definitely need something you can stick in your box just to get a little adhesive in there. So you're gonna slide this in, get your box together. Okay, so it's kind of a tight fit, but if you can get it lined up the way you want, and you see it looks pretty even back here, then go ahead and all you really want to do is get your uh, tear and tape or stamp and seal plus to adhere in here. So you're going to need something long that can help you press. And then go ahead and open it gently and get that crease going and then just fold it down and use your fingers to um, press that adhesive in. All right, so then you have, now what you should see is your box and that little lip should fit into both sides. All right, and then you have a box. And now it gets a lot easier because we're going to decorate it. The box fits pretty good on its own like this, but we will add a magnet magnetic closure to it. So that's all you have at that point. So now what we're going to do, I forgot about the base. So we're going to add our base. So what we're going to take is that piece of chipboard and try to dry fit it. And I'm already feeling a little snugness on the sides so I'm gonna need a little bit you're gonna need something to help you pull it in now and, and it's okay if this piece is a little bit shorter than that so we're gonna go ahead and take the trimmer I still have my uh, dull blade in here and I'm gonna take a hair off on two of the sides and I'm okay if that is a lot, not a lot, lot, but a little bit shorter than the inside of my box because the piece of cardstock I place in here is gonna be bigger and hide this chipboard. So now it's still a little tight, but I think it's going in. So what this does is it just helps the bottom of the box to be stronger so that something with weight could actually be put in the box. So I'm going to pop this out. I'm not going to trim it anymore. I'm just going to put some adhesive on it so it stays in place. So you can use your stamp and seal. You don't need a lot. You could use your tear and tape. I just want to put enough so that it um, stays down. But the cardstock piece is going to need to be trimmed. And then we're going to switch our blade back. So I was happy with this tight fit. I'm going to take my bone folder, just pressing it down in the corner so I have no extra lifting because you want to avoid extra lifting. All right, so now this piece is the cardstock and it's I'm going to take off a hair on the sides because it's still a little thick or tight in here see now it's really nice but you want to be careful about not taking off too much but see how it's so now my shorter side needs a little shaving so again, I'm just taking off like 
maybe an eighth of an inch at a time. You don't want to just go hog wild crazy with it because you don't want to cut it too short. It's still bubbling, so I can't get it all the way in or all the way down, I should say. I need, I need to bring it back up and trim it just a little bit more. Come on. Let me just take off. And I think what I'm gonna do is put my adhesives on this next time. So I cut off a little bit more. Hopefully it wasn't too much. All right. I am going to, this you could use Stamping Seal Plus. You could actually even start using the regular Stamping Seal. We'll just finish this piece off. So, um, just coming in and putting it in here. And so, there we go. There we go. Bringing in my bone folder to flatten that down. There you go. And that's the inside of your box. Now it's all about the fun part, decorating the outside of the box. So these are the papers. I wanted a two-tone. So this paper is going to be my bottom paper. So I'm going to do these three or four edges. So I need, so I'm going to cut. So this was one and a half inches from here to here. So I'm going to do one and three eighths. So I'm, since this is 12 inches, I'm going to cut one and three eighths all the way down. And then I'm going to cut this at five and three eighths, uh, sorry, five and seven eighths. Oh, I meant to change my blade. <laughs> oh, it wasn't too dull. All right. So if you had a dull blade in there, go ahead and change it out before you start cutting all your designer series paper. That's the cut I made. So this one, I want it again at five and seven eighths. And then I need two more that are four. So we'll just cut another one and three eighths, we said, a full strip and we'll cut those down. Oh, probably, oh well, I won't notice. Okay, so four and three eighths and another four and three eighths. So like with my paper, I'm using a pattern paper. And so now when I put my ends together, it's not gonna line up because I didn't make sure. So keep that in mind when you're cutting your designer series paper. I'm going to go with it anyways. You can work with this box open or closed. We're putting it on the side with the bottom, which is with the lip. Okay. And you can use the regular stamping seal will work because now we're just putting on our designer series paper. But you will want a nice strip on all the edges so you have no lifting. this down I'm gonna have a little bit of margin on all four sides there we go and I'm just gonna repeat that process all the way around you can use wet adhesive on this the wet adhesive um, the reason we avoided wet adhesive in the major construction, it would hold, it just, we want it to dry faster than the wet adhesive would dry. So we would be needing paper clips, I mean not paper clips, but clothes pins to hold our pieces in place. But if you have the time for that, this video, I would have had to do a lot of um, lapsing or fast forwarding. 
while the um, glue dried. So there we go. And one more end. And then the bottom of our box will be covered. I'm not putting it on the bottom bottom. If you want paper on the bottom bottom, you can. And then we're gonna use this one for the top and whatnot. So, cause this has a pattern, I think I'm gonna um, try to cut it so that I get a nice top up here. Um, I don't wanna do it like this and have it look like that. You know what I mean? So we're gonna do something like this. We have to center it. So you might need to um, be more generous in the paper because you're going to have a different kind of salvage on here because the box ends here. So ideally, you really want like your topper to come from like the center of this paper. So let's go ahead and cut off some of our, our sides and see if we can get closer to that center area. So we want one and three eighths again. I want two strips of that, but let me see if I'm at a point where I'm close to my center. So I'm really close to centering this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it over here. I'm going to cut it like that so I can get, I want this diagonal in the center is what I want. So I'm just going to play with that. So this is a four and a half. So I want four and three eighths. So four and three eighths would be, is going to get really, let's stick to the four and a half and then we'll half it. All right, so two and a quarter. So I want this diamond right here at my two and a quarter. So here's my two and a quarter. And this is about my halfway, right? So let's go ahead and get it there. So I'm going to trim it. And now I'm going to put it at the four and a half right here. Okay, so what I wanted was to capture this diamond in the center, right? Okay, so then it's six. So at three, I want the half of this paper to be at my three. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to cut. And then I'm going to come up to my six and I'm going to cut. So what this did is this, this got me pretty centered, right? Now what I have to do is I need to cut off a quarter inch, but it's going to have to be like an eighth of an inch on all four sides because I need, I want that um, margin of the paper to show. So at the four and a half inch, I'm going to come into that, I'm going to come back from four and a half to that first line on my trimmer, which would be, I think it would be seven sixteenths. And I'm just getting this. I guess I said I was going to take off an eighth. I think I'm going to take off. Um, total, I'm taking off an eighth, not a quarter. So I just took off one sixteenth on both sides. Now I'm going to lay it on top and see. Yes, I like that margin. So I'm going to continue. All right. On the six, I'm going to come back to that first line, which would be the... Um, 15 sixteenths, five and 15 sixteenths. I know this is horrible, huh? But this is how you get what you want. You know, if you like a quarter inch, if you like more spacing, then you could have done the quarter inch, but I know I don't like more spacing. All right, I think I'm on this. Nope. I'm, I think that's I'm on this side. Okay, so now I'm going to come to that five and seven eighths there we go now when i lay this on top my diamond pattern still looks very centered so we're going to use some the regular stampin seal 
Again, you could use a wet adhesive. We just want it on the edges. Try to work as close to the edges as you can. Oh, my stamp and seal is forcing it to continue working when it's complaining. There we go, I got some there. And I would put a couple of strips down your center and then you want to place it centering your margins. There we go. That looks really good. Okay. And then we just want to repeat. I want to repeat this paper on the top half of my box. If you want these bricks or tiles to be on here, that's that's up to you. If you want to add a third paper in here, that's up to you. I'm going to do something like that. All right. And I will, these are going to be five and seven eighths. More at five and seven eighths. And then I'm going to cut two more pieces. Let's see if this is, I think this is four and three eighths. Oh, it is, sweet. All right, we're gonna use this piece. So I'm gonna come to my four and three eighths. So let me just cut these. So I need one and three eighths right because these are the half one and a half inch sides and one and three eighths and then i'm going to trim these to four and three eighths and i'm going to trim this one four and three eighths So you have this much paper left as the other sides. If you want to use, um, you know, if you want to cover the inside or you could pick a different pattern if you like. These are the papers we're going to use. And I'm just going to use, continue using the stamp and Seal Plus. I'm kind of done with the trimmer unless I decide to trim the inside. I think the video is going to get long enough and I think you get what you need to do. Um, you would just cut these same pieces if you want to do the inside. And what I would do for the inside is maybe just the top and bottom and not do all the sides. Because the box looks really pretty and clean on the inside already because we already added all that cardstock. I say I'm trying to stay to on the edge, but you can see I don't always get it right on that edge. So it's just working with what we got. All right. There we go. And then, okay, so we're gonna put side number three on. I probably just took side number four aside as if it was a scrap piece. So we'll find it in a minute. All right. I thought I lost that piece. All right, so let's get this last piece in place and then we're gonna do the dragonfly decorations. Go ahead and put some in the center. All right. Oh, forgot to do the magnet on the back on in on there. So we're gonna add the latch or the clasp, whatever you want to call it. Um. So what I did previously on the Mother's Day box, I just added a latch with magnets. So there's. A magnet here and a magnet here. The magnets match up and that's kind of keeping the box securely closed. 
So we could do the same here on the Father's Day box. Um, and we could pick one of these papers or whatever we're going to do up here. All right. This is what we ended up doing for Mother's Day. But as I showed you, we're going to be doing the dragonfly. And these were the two cards we were using for inspiration. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. And I wanted this sentiment, make good things grow all year long. So I'm going to think of that. And I wouldn't mind putting some metallic on here. I'm using the everyday label for a sentiment. So I had a sentiment on the Mother's Day box. So I wanted to put a positive statement on the Father's Day box as well. And so I picked from this uh, Dragonfly Garden, May Good Things Grow All Year Long. Um, I already stamped it using early espresso because I forgot to turn back on the camera after I set up the stamps. Um, but I am going to go ahead and I want to cut, I want to make a bronze label for behind this. And, um, but I want it longer than this. So I'm going to trim this so this is like about one and a half inches so i'm gonna trim it let's see if i had it like that and a little bit longer that would be perfect so let's just oh let's follow this guide why do we have to recreate the wheel why right and See if I can get that guy to, there we go. Okay, so I think that's the right width. It's about one and a half. I think it's actually a little short, shorter than one and a half. Yeah, so it's like one and seven sixteenths. So I know you guys hate the one eighths and I know how you must feel about the sixteenths. <laughs> So, um, but when you want something in a particular way, you just have to accept it. All right, so I'm going to stick my foil in here. There we go. Make sure it's as aligned as possible. It came out pretty good. And then, so it's going to look something like this. And then I'm going to um, put this piece in and get it as close as I want. Let's get it even on both ends. There we go. And we'll just share the difference. Now, if you really want to retrim it, you can. But I Hi, it happens happened again. The camera has um, turned off and didn't capture anything. So I'm going to go ahead and re-stamp these things, but I've already adhered them onto the front of my box. So um, I will show you how I colored the butter, the, uh, the dragonfly, and I will show you... All I did was punch out these in er the early espresso scraps we had from when we took off those little squares. So when we originally took off our little square pieces from our cardstock at the very beginning, that's what I used to punch out these three um, dragonflies. They're coming from this punch, the baby dragonfly. And I did put a little Wink of Stella on them. And then to do this bigger dragonfly, all I did was punch out, I stamped it first, so let me stamp it. I stamped it in the early espresso. And then I colored it in, I used the light old olive. If you have Mossy Meadow, I would use Mossy Meadow. I just don't have a blending marker for Mossy Meadow. And I'm just going to add some splotches in here. 
so it kind of looks like it's variegated. Is that the right word? And then I'm going to take the light uh, Misty Moonlight and I'm going to just come in and color some more. I really think that's going to get us the look we're looking for. I'm going back in with the light, I think. Let me add some dark. This is the old olive. Let me just add some dark lines. So it's not all light in the end. Okay, now we're going back to the light. My, the Misty Moonlight is very dark for the light, so I'm just gonna color it all in with the light um, Old Olive. But I did wanna get some, so I might bring in that Misty Moonlight again, cause I feel like I'm and I just want to color in his body a little bit. I feel like I'm losing my blue tone in here. There we go. So that's how I colored him here. I I didn't I kept it all flat on the box. I did bend up the wings a little bit, but it's all right if they naturally go flat. So all you have to do at this point is align it in the punch like so. And we could put Oh, you know what we could do is so not to waste him. We could put him over here or we could um, put him on the latch that we're gonna make. Okay, so then when you had, when we cut the eight and a half, when we cut our paper from 12 by 12 to 10 and a half by 12, this is a strip we had left. So we're gonna use this strip to make this latch. That's what we used here. Now what I'm gonna do is we said this was an inch and a half. So we're gonna trim this down to the inch and a half. Okay, so we're gonna cut this latch down to three inches. And we're gonna make sure it's at the one and a half inches we need for the um, stamp, which I believe it is, yes. Okay, so then we are going to cut <clears throat> We're gonna stick this in this everyday label punch and make sure it's even and punch it. I'm gonna use this for on top. So I'm gonna do the same thing, stick it in my everyday label punch. But this one is not as wide, it's not the inch and a half. So what I'm gonna do is make sure it looks uh, centered in the, on both sides. And when I'm satisfied, I'm gonna just punch it. And then that's going to be my um, latch that's going to come down. All right. So this is going to come down here like this. We'll glue these together. I just want to see if they're too long. And we're going to put a, a magnet inside here. So let's go ahead and put a magnet inside there. We're going to use a piece, a small piece of the um, tearing tape. I like to use tear and tape on magnets. It's thin, it's double-sided adhesive, it's simple. Can't really go wrong with that. So when we put this in, we want it on the designer series paper because we want as less amount of bulk between the two magnets as possible. So you could put it here like that. You just don't want the adhesive where the two magnets are gonna come together. And I just wanna make sure that it's not too close to the edge. So I have room to hide it. So let me get my alignment good on here. I think I like that. So I'm gonna come in and glue in here. Let's just get out some trusty combo. 
Let me take a moment and this is going to get messy in here. All right, let me line it up the way I want and wipe off all the extra glue. Let's get it like that. Everything's looking good. And straighten that out a little bit. And then I'll glue this down. There we go. I'm going to probably trim this. Because I don't really want it at the, the top or the, where this hinge starts. I'm, I want it to be the same length. So let me get my other magnet right there. Two things. Either one, your magnet needs to go under this piece of paper or you need something to go on top of here. So you're going to have this come down. We're going to chop that off. I think we have plenty of room. So let me just cut that down to about here. So it's going to come like this. So either you want to put your magnet down under this sheet of paper, which is my option. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in. You want this guy in pretty, um, like not forgiving. So you want to really glue it in because any of the tapes I think would eventually give over time. So here is, let me just take this off. Hopefully you didn't use wet adhesive on this. I'm probably going to replace it since it's torn. I don't know. We'll see if I can salvage that. So what I really want is this in the right place. Like so. I don't think my rip is that bad. So I'm going to live with the rip. If you want to redo the paper, it was 1 and 3 eighths by 6. No, by 5 and 7 eighths. There we go. And we're just going to press that down. All right, so now my box is fixed. And I'm going to just kind of curve that down so it doesn't look like it was. And we're going to stick this butterfly. And I'm going to glue it on because I don't want it lifting. Like so, there we go. That is, let me move this aside and clean up my space for a minute. So there is your Father's Day box and your Mother's Day box. If you want to um, put additional paper inside the boxes, I would do the bottom and the top and those would be about five and three, five and seven eighths by four and three eighths. If you want to do the edges, it would be the same measurements as the outside, which was um, four and three eighths by one and three eighths. And there you have it. The more paper you add to the box, the stronger the box would be. So I'm not going to tell you not to because it just makes a stronger box. But these would be very nice um, boxes for a desk or a dresser um, to hold little trinkets and uh, things like that. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in subscribing, I would sure appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.